Okay, all right. Um, this lecture um, is all about um, the, the statistic in data analysis. Um, the point is I made this lecture sort of like in general, and um, some of them you might not use in your research, but I feel like um, you, you have to know the thing in general and, and make and have the awareness of how statistics could be used in the research. So some of the stuff are the old stuff that you already know. Some you probably have heard or some you have already forgotten because it's everything you have probably done in your statistic course in your undergrad, okay. So um, let's talk about the role of statistic research, okay. Um, most of us, when we think about statistics in research, we are thinking about the calculations, right? Means, um, standard deviation, and, and those sort of stuff, okay? But actually, um, if you read more and doing like deeper research, you know that statistics involved in, in so many ways in research, okay? The first thing of statistic in research is that it can be used as a tool in designing a research, so like experimental design, okay? If you come across something about um, designing an experiment, whether it's one factor at a, at a time design, or whether it's a factorial design, or probably a lot of you have heard about uh, the response surface methodology and making like, you know, doing the, ex, um, planning the experiment so that you could predict something, okay? That is a part of the experimental design as well. And it evolved the statistic, okay? So in, in those type of thing, you probably have heard like the p-values and, and the confidence level, that sort of stuff it is part of the statistic as well, okay? The second important role for statistic in research is for analysis of the data that you obtain from your experiment, okay? This is probably the most used statistic that you come across, okay? So if you do the experiment that um, repeated, okay, that you do repeats or, <laughs> Uh, you have to, to find the means, you find the errors, you find the uh, standard deviation. So that's this analysis of the data you have obtained from the experiment. And another important role of statistics is in making conclusion. It helps you in making conclusion whether uh, the data that you have is probably believable whether you need to do the experiment again, or if you want to see whether the two values are different, statistics help you in making those decisions. So it's, it's in many ways, okay? And, uh, and when, you, when, when you do the experiment, of course, you have to think about what statistic you are going to apply in, in, in your work, okay. So, so it is a part of your, uh, in your term assignment that I assigned to you as well, that um, you have to have like the last part of each of the experimental plan that you have to think about a statistic that you will use in your research. So, um, Okay, so as, as you go along with this lecture, you might have as well think about what you, what sort of statistic you are going to use in, in your research as well. Okay. In this lecture, we are going to cover the two types of statistic, okay? Um, statistic comes in two main categories, okay? The first one is called descriptive statistic, 
and another one is called inferential statistics. Okay. The first three lectures will talk about the descriptive statistic, and the last, uh, the last two lecture will be inferential statistic. Okay, the descriptive statistic by definition is used to describing the data. Uh, it's not descriptive. Okay, so I have uh, made a mistake in in spelling this one. It's describing the data. Okay. The way it describes the data is that it explains features of your data set. When we talk about data set, it means that like when you take, uh, when you do the experiment, you have values uh, from, from um, different factors that you vary in your experiment or, or, the, um, or the repeats that you do in your experiment. So, Descriptive statistic used to explain certain features of data set, and that is what we are going to include in our lecture of what are those features. Okay. The point is that um, descriptive statistic only interests in the set of data that you have. It doesn't extend the conclusion, the same conclusion to the general population. So that means that it only um, explain the values that you have in your hand, okay? You can't, um, you can't extrapolate this result and explain other things as well, okay? The second type of statistic that we are going to do, uh, cover is the inferential statistic, okay? Inferential statistic is um, the study of the stat statistical samples, that means that it's a representative of the population. So that's the second half of our lecture. It can generalize what you obtain from the sample that you select and you extend this to the population, okay? And information on population is not reported as number. So basically the difference between descriptive statistic and, and inferential statistic Really, if you, if, you, if you want to think about it, it's the one, the descriptive statistic will have some sort of numbers, okay? But inferential statistic will be something of uh, the statistical test where you have uh, the new hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, and you have to calculate um, like F values or the P values. That sort of stuff is the inferential statistic. Um, all right, so oh, what I'm going to say also is that um, with the COVID, okay, the research they, they do about the COVID situation that you probably come across in some, in, in, in some of the media, they, they, they are involving like the p-values, a group of populations, um, many of statistical samples, and then they make a conclusion that, okay, making uh, the, uh, giving this vaccine versus that vaccine, whether which one is better or whether they have a similar result. So that type of thing are inferential statistics, okay? Okay, now let's move to a descriptive statistic, okay? The first hour, our first three lectures. So descriptive statistic, like I told you earlier, it is the analysis of data that helps you to describe the data in a meaningful way. So when you do the experiment, okay, you will have a lot of data. If you do many experiments, you will have a lot of data, a lot of number. If you don't do anything with it, it doesn't have any meaning. And it's very difficult to, to, to see whether the, your result produce anything, okay? So descriptive statistic is the way you play around with the data. So, so it has some number and it represents something, okay? And um, it helps you interpret the data like in, in a more simple way, okay? One thing that I always, always tells my student is that if you have done the experiment and if you have a set of data, 
you do something with this straight away. Don't wait. Because sometimes when you have those data, if you start calculating something, it, I mean, as a part of descriptive statistics, it probably helps you to, to, to make decision of what are the next thing that you are going to do. So don't wait around with a lot of data and smiling and say, hey, I have so many data. I have done a lot of experiment. If you calculate it a little bit later, you probably have done like something wrong. You probably have to repeat everything that you probably don't don't want to repeat, okay? So, so doing some calculation on the data is very important. Now, let's see um, how, like I told you earlier, descriptive statistics is help you describe the data feature, the values that you have, what are the features of those data, okay? There were four type, four, four features of the data that you can calculate and, and help you visualize how, how the data look. Okay. The first one is the most common thing that you do all the time. It's the measure of the central tendency or the statistical average of the data. So it's, it's the average values, so to say. Okay, so just to see um, the middle, where, where, where your data is in the middle. The second one, which is the features of the data, is to see how spread your data is, which is the measure of dispersion, okay? The third one are uh, to see or to describe whether your data is symmetrical. This is important because it, because it will relate it to the inferential statistics. So whether you have a normal distributed data or whether you have left skew or right skew and those sort of stuff, okay? The last one is the measure of relationship or the correlation. So to say it's how X relate to Y and the R square, okay? So basically these are the four features of the data that, that um, you use a descriptive statistic to, to explain. Okay, so today we probably just um, look at the first um, two features of the data, which is the statistical averages and the dispersion of the data. Okay, this is like back to your high school day. <laughs> okay, um, there were several. Um, numbers that help you that um, actually explain the central tendency of your data. So uh, the first one is the mean. This is what you, you, you are most uh, familiar with, okay? The mean is the average, okay? So if you have a set of data, one, one easy way for you to, to describe that data is to find the mean. Of, of those data. So the mean is the arithmetic average. You, everybody knows how to calculate means, okay? And there were two types of means as well, okay? The first one is your normal mean. <laughs> that means that you have numbers and then you averages them, okay? I, I don't put the formula or anything in because it's a common thing already. Another, where you calculate the mean is the weighted mean, okay? This is the way, just like you calculate the GPA, okay? Your GPA, it doesn't only depends on what grade or what level that you get. It always, it's um, also taken into account the number of credit of that subject. So you don't want to get a bad grade for, uh, the high credit subject, that, that, that kind of stuff, okay? So, so think of it as the way you calculate your GPA, okay? Um, why do you have to bother having two types of means, okay? Um, normally, you just only, you are fine with the normal um, arithmetic means, but some, in some situation, 
if you if you want to find the mean and that it, um, you want to weight it a little bit differently, then you put the weight in. Right. For example, uh, one obvious example I could think of is um, when you uh, presenting your seminar. Okay. When 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 you presenting your seminar, uh, I'm as a marker will evaluate different category of 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 your of your seminar, like how you prepare your slide, how you speak, how you answer the question, the type of thing. And each of the category will have a different weight. So they put more importance into answering the answering the question and those type of stuff. So so the mean will be different if you calculate the, the normal mean and the weighted mean, okay? Um, just in case, okay, <laughs> just in case you, uh, just in case you don't, you don't get what they are for the weighted mean, okay? It's, um, for example, if it's in your GPA, okay, your GPA is the weighted mean. So it's the number of credit that you have divided by the grade level that you get. Like if you get A, you get four, right? And then you sum them up for every for everything. And then you divide it by, by the sum of your credit. So so that's that's how the mean goes. Okay. So if you have like 10 subjects, okay, you will have this one for 10 times. <laughs> so, so it will be different. Um, if you calculate it using mean, you will just get the grade and divided by the number of subjects that you have. Okay, so, so that's how it goes. And um, of course, arithmetic means is the most common measure of central tendency. It's probably be the first one that you are thinking about when you have the data and and then you want to calculate something, maybe mean, that is the, the first thing that comes across. Okay. The second measure of central tendency is median, okay? Is median and mode. Uh, the, 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 the other two are median and mode. Okay. Um, we probably don't use these measure of cent central tendency a lot, but, um, I want you to make awareness of the existence of these two values, okay? The median is the middle item of the series. So that means that if you have many data that comes in series and you arrange, okay, when, when, when they say come in series means that you arrange the number from lowest to highest or from the highest to the lowest. And then you identify the middle term, okay? And, um, and, and the middle item, the value at the middle is the median, okay? And, um, but if you have like the two values in the middle, you do to take the average of the two and that is your median. The another one is the mode, okay? Mode is the most frequent values in series, okay? So, so basically the mode is the number that occur the most frequent, okay? And it is useful in study of po population size. Um, I don't remember the Thai word, okay? Uh, for the median and mode. mean is uh, right? Um, who remember what is median and mode? The middle item? Anyone, anyone, the Thai student, does anyone remember what, what, what they are? I know that one is Matayatan. I think it's median, right? Uh, yeah, median is matayatan. 
and mode is I think mode is something let me find I forgot to prepare the Thai word for this one mode is Taniyom. so it's Mataya Tan and Taniyom. okay so Taniyom, which is something that occurred the most frequent okay now let's see some example okay uh for now i want i want you to to participate in this one okay let, let let's see the first um the first question first okay uh with this one i <laughs> i need some response okay <laughs> okay some example of the central tendency in a convenience store if the seller wanted to see which item was the best seller what type of the statistical um, average or the, the, the central tendency that, that the seller wants to use? Is it average? Is it um, median or is it mode? You can, you can type in the chat and, 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 and let me know which one, which one you think is that, is the statistical average or, or the, 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 the measure of the central tendency that you are going to use for the first one. You don't have to turn on your microphone, but just type in what you think is the answer. Um, do you know how to open the chat? So down there you have like a chat icons and then you open the chat and then you just type in what you think is the is the values that the seller wants to use. For the student in Thai, ก็คือข้อหนึ่งอาจารย์อยากทราบว่าคุณเป็นเป็นเบสเซลเลอร์คือขายดีที่สุดเนี่ยเขาจะใช้ค่าอะไรในการในการรายงานก็คือเป็น average เป็น median หรือเป็น mode ว่า mode ครับ so uh, yeah mode right okay yes okay you would use mode because um, if you want to see what happened the most frequent, right? It's the mode. Alright. Okay, in second question, okay, in second question, in this examination, you have 11 students score. Okay, score from 80 to 100 and the full marks is 100. Okay, I want you to calculate the mean, the mode and the median of this score, okay? The first one I want you to, to find the mean. Okay, you can try to calculate and type down your, your answer. Let's use the calculator or your Excel or whatever. Just let me know in the examination, you have 11 students score this much and what are the mean mode and median of this score? Okay, one get 79. Okay, I'm going to do it myself also. All right, okay. Most of you got it right, 79, okay? So you just add every items up and divided by 11 students, right? This is a normal mean. Now, next, can you determine what are the mode? Mm -hmm. 
Okay. A lot of students has, um, have the answer already, okay? So, um, yes, I think everyone got it right. It's 70. So basically, you what you need to do is finding the mode you have to start like um, doing things in series, right? The first one is 60, 64, and then what do we have? 70, three of them, right? So you have 70, 70, and 70. Then you get um, 75, right? 175. And then you got um, the next one is 80, right? And the next one is 90. And then you have two of 95, and then you have 100. So the 11th student, so you one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm asking mode, right? Mode is the most frequent, so it's 70, 70, 70, 370. So the mode is 70, it's correct, okay. Now the median, okay, you can just see from my screen, I guess. Now, um, for the median, since the median is the, um, the middle, right? You see from my screen already that you have 11, so 75 is a median, okay? So the, the point is that for the median, you, has, you have to arrange things in series from lowest to highest, or highest to lowest, and then just count with them, okay? Uh, for the next example, okay? Number three, for the following data, is the salary of the employees in the company. So there are 10 people. Okay. I want to ask your opinion. You can type or you can um, turn on your microphone and then, and then speak it out. Discuss if this was appropriate to use mean as a representative of the data. Okay, so basically in this example, we have 10 staff and each one has a different salary. K is K is 1,000, so 15K is 15,000, okay? 14K is 14,000 baht, maybe, yeah. My question is that, is it appropriate that we use mean as a representative of the data? สำหรับนักศึกษาไทยนะคะก็คือว่าอันเนี้ยเป็นตารางเอ่อเงินเดือนของพนักงานในบริษัทสิบคนนะบริษัทนี้มีพนักงานสิบคนอาจารย์ต้องการอยากจะทราบความเห็นเราว่าถ้าสมมุติว่าจะใช้ค่าเฉลี่ยทำไมคะทำไมถึงคิดว่าไม่เหมาะสมเลยคือมันจะมีเงินเดือนที่ได้สูงสูงมากๆเลยครับอาจารย์ผมคิดว่าตัวที่เหมาะสมน่าจะต
of this company. Anyone help me with that, please? So we have 10. So the, the average, okay, I calculate the average. Um, this one, the average is 30.7K, which is um, the, the mean, the, the statistic average. So if I'm, if I'm from, from uh, if I'm the manager or if I'm someone, who talk about this company that, hey, this company, the employee of this company has the average uh, salary of um, 30,700 uh, 30, baht per month. It's very misleading, right? So if I say, okay, uh, we want to hire someone to work with us and our average salary is 30,700 baht. It's very misleading because, because most of the people doesn't actually get to like about half of the number that I said, right? Only like these two, these two people, number nine and number 10, are the one who pull up the mean of, of everything. So, so it's not appropriate in this case, okay? So, um to say which one is more which one is more appropriate that's why that's why like in the company if you if if, if you're looking at like a job uh, a job title they they say the the salary started from <laughs> okay so this one is like started from 12000k uh 12000 baht or something like that and it can, could go up by the letter or whatever it is, but it's not fair to say that the average salary is 30.7K because most of the people doesn't have, not even like about half of that number, okay? So this is how important it is that you, you should be able to, to choose um, the appropriate, way to to represent the data okay and and with this example it leads to another um another feature of the data which is the measure of this person okay so the measure of this person is to tell how scattering how scattering the data is, okay? So if you, if, if you look back at this example, you see that the average is about uh, 30.5K, right? And it's not even to most of the people. So that means that from the middle point, from the mean average of the salary of these people, the data spread so much from, from, from the middle because you have, because you have, um, sorry, because you have 30.7K here and the lowest you have is 12K and the highest you have is 95K. So, so, so basically the data spread so much. So we have to find a way to, to, to tell the features of our data. So in this case, you will find that the mean is probably not enough because it might not represent something, right? Think, think of this when you are, you are doing experiment and you do three repeats of the same experiment. If this is a number from your experiment, okay? First repeat, you have 12, and second repeat, you have 95, you have the average of 30.7, and then you report that your, your data is average at 30.7 without saying that how spread that your data is. So it, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be appropriate in this case. So that is why sometimes you need more than one values to, to describe your data. Okay, 
And the measure of dispersion is some is something that that we normally use. Okay, and and how we use them is actually depends on how um, the appropriateness of of the use. What I find we use most for the measure of dispersion is range and standard deviation. Okay, another one is mean deviation, which we are going to talk for each of them right now. Okay, the first the first thing that we use to um, explain how the data is spreading is range. Okay, range is a very rough measure of uh, variability. Okay, is uh, by itself, it is the difference between the minimum and the maximum values of the data set. Okay, and it only gives you the rough idea of how spread the data is. Okay, so for example, if go back to this example, you say that the, the salary is ranging from 12K to 95K. So 95 minus 12, um, hold on, is 95 and 12. Okay, so let me see. It's 95 and 12 and 95, so it's ranging from 12K to 95K, and the range, which is a different, is 95 minus 12, which is 85K. Oh, 83K, sorry. So, so the range, the difference between minimum and maximum is 83K. So that is the range. Sometimes you use the range in, maybe sometimes in writing your manuscript as well. If you have like some set of data, you can say um, the result is ranging from this to, to that. It just gives giving some idea of how spread the data is, okay? The second one that you can use to tell how dispersed your data is, is the mean deviation, okay? Mean deviation is the averaging, is, is, is averaging the difference between um, values to an average of the series. Um, the next slide, I will have um, the formula. Okay, so we just go through it first. So the average that you use for mean deviation calculation can be mean, median, or mode. It's, it's, it depends. Normally we use arithmetic means. Okay. The last one is the standard deviation. And this is the most widely used the measure of dispersion. You, you use it all the time in, in, your, in, in explaining your experiment. It's mean plus and minus standard deviation. Okay, but the standard deviation itself has um, two subcategory. It can be sample standard deviation or population standard deviation. So let's see um, the difference in, in this one. So, so it's all about calculation. So, so there are formulas that you can, that, that you can use or choose. Um, the, the difficult thing about using the statistic is what should I use? <laughs> okay, so like I told you earlier that most of the time we use mean plus or minus standard deviation, but sometimes um, people use just mean and errors. That, that is possible also, okay? So the range is the difference between minimum and maximum. And the bad thing about it is that it is extremely sensitive for, for, um, to outlier. So the outlier is, uh, uh, I think we have example that we, that, that we are going to, to look at, okay? And explaining using range, since it is sensitive to outlier, if you have some data, which is within like a very, um, 
narrow range, but you have only one data that is like far different, your range can be um, can definitely become sort of like high, <laughs> like wide range. Okay. Mean deviation, okay, is 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 the difference between the mean, which is this mean can be mean, median, or mode. And each individual data, you subtract it to the mean and then sum them up divided by n. Okay. Um, this, this mathematical expression here, I hope that you sort of understand. If you are in doubt, maybe when we do example, you can ask me during that time that you don't know how to, how to expand this symbol or, or, or you don't know how to, how to do the calculation if you see the formula like this, okay? You can ask me later. And standard deviation, okay, is, um, this is the formula that you probably most use, mostly, most of you use, okay? So it is the difference between um, each individual data and uh, the arithmetic mean, you square, you divide it by n or n minus one, and then you take a square root, okay? So the difference is that there are two different types of standard deviation. Okay, so it's sample standard deviation or population standard deviation. The symbol is a little bit different. If you see like ACE, it is a sample standard deviation. If you see this Greek symbol, it's a population standard deviation, and the mean is also different. So, so it's a two different standard deviation. And lucky to say, that most of us will use sample standard deviation. And um, if you use the function in Excel, I'm not sure if you have ever used the function in Excel to calculate standard deviation. If you put um, um, in the cell, if you put STDEV and then the range of data there, you get the sample, uh, the sample standard deviation. Okay. Now the difference between sample and uh, and population deviation, apart from knowing how to calculate them differently, um, you need to 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 be able to differentiate which situation use sample standard deviation, which situation use population standard deviation. Okay. So sample standard deviation you use when you have a population, okay? And then you pick the sample from those population. We, we, we will extend it a little bit further. And for the population standard deviation, okay? We're talking about a larger population, okay? And, and we, we, we draw the sample from that larger population, okay? And then you don't pick, you don't pick each individual, unlike the sample standard deviation, you pick the individual. The population standard deviation, you, you think about the entire population and then you take this portion of sample, okay? And then if, if that is your experimental design that you uh, that your experiment is doing something like this, you have to use population standard deviation. But like I told you earlier, that lucky that most of our work will use sample standard deviation. Okay. Before I go a little bit further, let's see how to differentiate between these two, okay? Um, in this one, okay, that's two little uh, question down there. A teacher wants to set an exam to a stu two students in a class. She wants to summarize the results in terms of mean and standard deviation. What type of standard deviation should she use? And another question, maybe it's easier if you see the two questions in, in, at, at the same time. The second, 
uh, example is a researcher recruit male aged between 35 to 45 years old to investigate the level of cholesterol as a marker for heart disease. What SD would be selected in reporting the results? Okay, so I want you to think or guess, okay, which case would use um, a population or which case use a sample standard deviation. Okay, you can type in the answer like this. If you think the left-hand side, you use population standard deviation, you can say pop. And then if the right-hand side, you think it is a sample standard deviation, you can put SAM or, or if you think the left-hand side, you use sample standard deviation and right-hand side, you use population standard deviation, you can just type down in the chat, okay? If you are not sure, you can guess, okay? Looking, looking at the two case, and then, and then you, 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 you could guess. I, I, I give you I give you a few more a few more minutes to think about it and then type in your your, your answer. <laughs> 